you're trying something new, obviously. <laughs> we're, we're having um, having this live stream, and I hope the folks out there who are, who are watching are, will be soon. Um, so just to let you know how things are going to work for the contestants, we'll have, um, you have a one minute, as you know, to pitch. Down here I have a timer that will be visible to you. Um, and when that time is up, it'll finish the sentence that you're on uh, at that point. And then, um, and then we're going to let the judges ask you a question, uh, maybe two, but probably one. Um, what you need to do um, to, to be where, we, where you film is sort of stand where I'm standing. You don't have to do that rock and roll thing, right? You can just uh, be out here in front of it. Uh, you can obviously tell this is not filling up the room with sound. This is for the, the video feed. Um, so, you know, come up, give your pitch. Um, in terms of the, the timer, I'll start it when you start talking. So you don't, you know, you don't have to like, are you ready, are you ready? Just when you go, I'll start it, okay? So I don't chop off any times while you're getting your breath up, all right? Um, so we are really pleased to have you here. Um, we have um, our sponsor, Chipman Goodwin, um, the, one of their attorneys, should be here momentarily uh, to be a part of the judging panel. And when she arrives, we'll introduce her. But in the meantime, I'd like to start by introducing the, the folks that will be on the judging panel. And I'm going to start on my right just because, I don't know, because I'm starting on my right. So we have uh, Subrio S.B. Chatterjee. Uh, Subrio is um, an information technology uh, professional. He's worked in healthcare. Um, he's led. Um, an IBM developer group in, in Hartford for a number of years, uh, won a number of awards for his outstanding user group that he led there. Uh, he's been a mentor at Startup Weekend, a mentor for a number of startup businesses, and uh, just an all-around great guy. So thank you for coming to you. Thank you very much. Uh, next to him is Patrick O'Neill. Patrick O'Neill is the Director of Venture Capital at uh, Connecticut Innovations. Uh, Connecticut Innovations is the state's Venture Capital Fund. Um, they work to help be sure that we have uh, venture capital investments in the state. And Patrick's been there for a while. I forget how long, but back when I was on the board, you were you were relatively new. But um, Patrick, um, before he came to Conne uh, Connecticut Innovations, he um, he worked in energy. He worked for Duke Energy and another uh, energy company as a as an engineer. Mm -hmm. So he has a, a great technical background in his role at Connecticut Innovations. We in, invest in technology, medical devices, um, sort of things that are that are real things. Oh, come on. Um, so thank you, Patrick, for coming and representing me. And next to him is Don Moore. Don is um, uh, currently an adjunct here. Um, I don't know if any of you have classes with him today, uh, but. Um, Don is a retired CEO. He has a, a gosh, now I need to remember what, what your, yeah, well, he's been an investor, worked in some venture capital, right? And right. Um, I forget what else. What else. You want to say what you've done, Don? No, any, anything that has to do with high technology, I've probably been involved in at some point in my life. High technology. So, Julie, you want to come down and, okay. So, um, our, our Guest from Shipman Goodwin has just arrived, uh, Julia Camarco. Uh, Julia is in the, um, she manages uh, the legal work for venture capital funds for uh, investors. Uh, she works in mergers and acquisitions. Uh, she's been a real rising star, won a number of awards at, uh, public awards for her work at Shipman Goodwin. And um, I want to say again how much we appreciate the sponsorship. Chipman Goodwin has been sponsoring this now for uh, over 10 years. Um, and twice a year they, they give us some money so we can give our students some money. So thank you, Julie, for coming and for your continuing support. We apologize that we are not better with directions at Chipman Goodwin. It's a little bit of a struggle. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and we don't have street addresses here. <laughs> uh, um, I should have. I didn't realize that uh, you didn't know your way. Sorry. <laughs> so um, I think we should start. 
Um, so the way this is going to work, uh, Dr. Barry is going to uh, call out your name and call out who's on deck. And so you come up and get yourself situated and uh, we'll start pitching. So, okay, All right. who's first? University reports that 80% of college students face stress, while another 40 million Americans face anxiety. And what a better way to solve this than to play with dogs. Puppy love, the business I'm proposing, would be a fun place where you could hang out, watch Netflix, give dogs treats, and just cuddle with them. One of our main competitors would be Cat Cafe, which is located there. They actually adopt out their animals, why we keep our animals for consistency. Again, Our other competitor would actually be therapy dogs. Some of them actually come to Central sometimes but usually only one dog comes for about like 20 to 30 students, so it's not really a one-on-one -on -one experience. Puppy love would be a one-on-one -on -one experience. Um, I'm asking for $55,000 to set up my business and for employees, rental, equipment, and dogs. Thank you. Where do, you, where do you see this business five years in the future? I see it maybe more innovative. Maybe there'd be an app set up to connect to it to see what kind of dogs are available at the time because you can reserve one in advance. How do you envision fees or fee structure working? The structure for what? Sorry. Fees. Like what fees? charge? How does that? So there'd be like a daily fee and also a fee if you just want to go for an hour. And there'd also be like a punch card. So after you go a certain amount of visits, you get a free time. Yeah. How do you plan to scale from? Just expand. Well, first I would try it on one area to make sure that it would work. And then I'd also do surveys and stuff. And if it's successful, I would try different locations, maybe with college students. Because college students can't really afford dogs and they like that attention to help with their studies and their stress. So that's where I would start. The other day, I went home and went into my bathroom, and all over my countertop was various lotions and different makeups used by my roommate's girlfriend. At first, I was annoyed by how much stuff was scattered over the counter. But then I realized there really isn't an efficient or effective system for women to organize all their different makeup. Now, after realizing this, I thought of the perfect way to solve it. Um, now, uh, it's such a problem. What if we, there was one-stop kit for women to get ready with? My suggestion is a dispensing apparatus that, follows, or that allows you four interchangeable and refillable capsules of different liquid makeup, such as concealer or foundation, as well as different lotions, like moisturizer uh, or acne cream. I believe that there is a large market for this in college students because you don't typically have much space and you're living in your dorm room. Now, after doing some substantial amount of market research with college student females at potential and, or research at potential competitors, and I found that the closest competitor would be a makeup display case. Um, but those are big and bulky, and that's just not efficient for small places. I'm asking for $10,000 to start up this uh, business. Can you tell me what the $10,000 would be used for? Use it would be used at first just for um, getting a basic amount of products built as well as some product testing to make sure that we can make uh, the product uh, perfect before we get it out into distribution, but also for employees and to get an engineer to um, actually perfect the system itself because the interchangeable capsules has to be quality. It can't you know, um, contaminate the different lotions. What's the distribution channel? Is it internet-based or? Um, at first, it would probably be local college areas because that would be the main um, point of reference. But then I would try and start with Amazon or Walmart, some online bases, because it would be easier to uh, contact the consumer base. Thank you. Thank you. 
How are you? My name is Sarah. And my name is Heather. Have you ever been in a situation where you were in a rush and you wanted something quick and tasty to eat but couldn't find anywhere to go? Of course. Pasta by pasta is the solution. And we made the situation easier for you. Everyone loves pasta. It's quick, cheap, and healthy. Pasta pasta is a pasta bar. You can order one of three types of pasta. Sidi, linguine, or egg spaghetti. There's three choices of protein, starting with meatballs, chicken, or sausage. You can also buy a side salad and a drink. And each order comes with a side of bread. And the price is $7.99 for the meal. Yeah. So downtown New Haven will be the best area to open because there's so much traffic from the universities and businesses. And within the next three years, Pasta Abasta plans to open two more locations and potentially become a franchise. We plan to receive 30% net income of total sales and are willing to give up 12% of the business. We need 100 households to start up the business. So we are We're asking, asking for, for your help to make this business possible. possible. in Italian restaurant so I have like some experience in the kitchen and like with Italian food so it was what's going to differentiate you from all of the other kind of fast casual restaurants there are other businesses like Chipotle or Subway that are kind of similar with how you order each piece but we're different because we're pasta and I don't know if there's really any other pasta in Italian I'm Ross Gatton. All right, for the adults here, can you imagine how much money you'd have in your savings account if you had started trading in the stock market back in college? The Dow Jones has gone from 2,800 to 25,000 in the for 20, yeah, 25,000 in the past 25 years. So the problem is that essentially there is no app currently designed and made specifically for college students to use and invest with. So that's my solution, Varsity Financial. It's essentially an, a new securities and trading finance app and it will be the first and only app designed specifically for college students and made by college students. And one of our functions that differentiates us, we'll have, we will have current graduate students essentially working as paid interns through an uh, encrypted messaging app dealing with undergrads on our site. So I'm asking for $50,000 to develop the site, get it off the ground, and get a prototype into a college near you. Thank you very much. Competition would be of other free trading apps, like, say, Robinhood. Um, they don't offer the college-to-college -college, uh, service that we would offer, and we would have, essentially, free trades, and we would be subsidized by our competi the larger competitors, the Scott Trades, the E-Trades, and the TD Ameritrades, who would advertise on our site, pay us to do that, and create a pipeline. Once our students are ready to go to their site, they'd migrate over, and we could either get a fee for that or just a straight commission. So it's, it's been a while, but when I was in college, um, the last thing I had was investable cash. Mm -hmm. how, how big is that market? And I'm thinking the kids who do have investable cash mm -hmm. probably have parents that are That's a good point. on the market. So we're focusing specifically on public universities. We think the private universities tend to have uh, wealthier students. But I know at Central, probably 90% of the students here work part-time. They have a relatively large amount of savings. Now, currently only 30% of 18 to 24-year-olds have over $1,000 in savings, but that doesn't mean they don't have other assets and that their parents wouldn't be willing to maybe loan them some money to get involved in this. We would offer margin loans um, up to $5,000 for people that have 10000 in their account. Uh, are you a trader? Uh, I do trade, certified? yeah. No, I'm not certified, but I do trade. Okay, so are there any regulatory hassles? No, we are not a fiduciary. We are just offering advice um, on you know, our best advice, essentially. Our master's students are not fiduciaries. They don't have to have a certification and we pay them essentially $15 an hour to be available during trading hours to, to help people with you know, real-time advice. Did 
you know that on average, 3,300 people die every day due to car accidents? Now, <clears throat> death changes the way that we view life, but it should also change the way that we view the road. And yet so often when we drive, we have poor visibility. Poor visibility that is caused by sunrise or sunset. Poor visibility at nighttime due to sun, due to uh, headlights when oncoming traffic is coming towards us. Nighttime is the most dangerous time to drive as it is poor visibility and all the darkness. My product, a light sensitive windshield, would adjust to any situation. If it was too bright outside due to sun glare, it would dim the light, dim the windshield. If it was too dark outside, it would adjust and make it brighter. This would allow drivers to have better visibility every day and would decrease unnecessary car accidents. I would look for an engineer to help me to design this product. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Questions? What, so, what is, Chris, what's the technology behind this? So it would be a film, uh, a, a black, thin film on each side of the glass. And so it would be structured with my engineer to focus in on the lights that is very strong. So if it's very strong, that would be blinding to the driver. So then we would adjust it to dim it and vice versa. So when it is very dim and the light is very minimal, it would adjust it and magnify that light. So there's no invention here, basically. The technology is to actually. Correct. So it's similar to tinted windows, except we have a competitive advantage over that because during nighttime, especially the elderly, they have a, a difficult time driving. So this would allow uh, more visibility. It would, be able, it would allow you to predict what was going to happen a little bit sooner. And what would be the path to get this into, uh, in, into an automobile? Uh, first, it would require the patent. After that, I would speak with an engineer. I have three engineers in my family to help me. And then after that, I would be testing the secondary market to see um, how people like it, to work out any kinks. And then after that, I would move on to uh, primary markets such as Toyota, Honda, and further. Have you, you said other products that have a patent? Do you have hold a patent on the idea? Or? I do not have a patent on the idea, so that would be my, my next step. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Edward Zalen, and I'm here today to start a conversation about school safety. CNN estimates that so far this year, there has been an average of one school shooting per week. To me, this is entirely unacceptable, and in response, different schools across the country have tried various methods at protecting their students. My, my idea to address this situation is something I like to call bear desk. Bear desk is a bulletproof desk that students would be able to easily, easily flip over and hide behind in the event that a school shooter breaks in, breaks in a school and is on campus. These desks would be lightweight, adjustable to a student's height, and quite obviously durable. Price should estimate anywhere between $500 to $700 per desk, which might sound expensive, but you can't put a price on student safeties on student safety. Safety in schools should be our utmost priority, and I think Bear Desk is the way moving forward in order to protect students. Thank you. Have you sized the market? Uh, I haven't sized, um, I haven't gotten a full grasp of the market yet, but uh, again, school, it, it doesn't appear as if school shootings are gonna be on take like a dramatic decrease anytime soon um, due to obviously a complexity of different reasons. And, uh, and as stated before, schools are constantly looking for ways to protect their students. So I feel like there's more than, an, more than enough or a sizable market for these. Do you have a comparison for the cost of this desk versus uh, the cost of a standard, uh, a standard desk? I'm, I'm not sure how much a standard desk would cost, but based off of estimates um, with different materials that you could put on the desk, such as um, plexigra or, uh, plexiglass or, um, or uh, Kevlar, um, 
uh, like I said, it should estimate anywhere between like five hundred to seven hundred dollars. Um, there was there was one father in Ohio who, um, you know, he was kind of testing around with it, and he was able to build one for he said it was eight hundred dollars. So I think I think you could probably make it for a little bit cheaper than that, but yeah. Thank you. My name is Ben Gross. I'm here to present my idea. Um, it's derived from six years of experiences in the landscape industry. I've worked for my father as well as a couple other contractors. My idea is to embark on a new type of small venture, which can be a part-time landscape business. Um, given I have experience with it, I also have a background in small engine repair, which helps keep costs down. My idea is to focus on specialty landscaping work that most landscaping contractors won't touch primarily jobs $250 and less or less that can even apply to college students as I do some work around the college campus as well. Um, in addition, I would like this business to ultimately move on to focus on um, wood-fired power, power plant um, for fuel as well as uh, natural disaster cleanup, forest fire prevention, etc. cetera. Um, and my other um, major idea is to ultimately incorporate an app um, which can allow um, my contracting business as well as others to succeed better in finding customers. Um, so that's my idea. Uh, so today, what would set your company apart from other, uh, say, College Pro or uh, other such um, uh, entities? Um, well, my idea primarily is to develop an app which makes it much easier for consumers to um, basically find the work. So they'll have an app on their phone. They can request, uh, regardless of, of what service it is, it could even be a lawn mow. Um, they'll be able to quickly uh, determine the price of the job, um, when the job will take place. It can be done quickly, hopefully. Um, that's basically what I want to set the company apart, because I do know that there are a few um, companies out there that provide the app, such as uh, Mose, uh, Plows and Mows, um, and they're based out of New York State, but the difference is they don't have the actual contracting business behind it. Um, so. So. So Ben, what's what's unique about why? Uh, I know you I know you you have an app, but what's unique about? I think what would be unique is uh, I'm passionate about the industry. I've been doing it since I was 14 years old. Uh, I do the majority of the work for myself. Uh, I work for my father and a couple local contractors in my area of West Hartford. Um, and I think I know what customers would like in terms of service. Um, I personally. Like my father has gotten me into specialty work, um, such as sidewalk edging. A lot of contractors won't seemingly won't go for a job if it's a small job, let's say a $40 job. Um, and we find as a part-time business, it works really well for us. Um, there's a lot of market for that, at least in our area. So. Thank you. I'm Alex Galda, and my perspective business venture is on-campus phone repair. Uh, from a CNN report that came out two years ago, 33% of iPhones that students have in their hands are cracked. So what better way than for me to come to you and fix your phone? You can come to dorm buildings, office halls, such as Vance or uh, Davidson, and I come and fix your phone for you. Uh, save the hassle of the student having to go out and find someone to fix them. Prices are a lot cheaper than those ones in the mall. I've done market analysis, and I beat them by about 20 to 30 percent. And what better way than to help another student? Uh, I found that students don't like going out of their dorms when they don't need to, and having a cracked phone is a very big inconvenience for everybody. My name is Alex Alden, and I'd like to thank you for your time. Was this plan to grow? Uh, how do you plan to grow? Will you have employees? Uh, yeah, I plan to get employees. Uh, we are lucky to be in a uh, geographic zone where we have four universities within a 15-mile radius. We have University of Hartford, St. Joe's, us, as well as Wesleyan. So I have four universities where I can start this business venture. And I, I may have asked, how much are you looking to raise, and what would you use that money for? Uh, I was looking for about 10000 uh, uh in an initial investment. I would use that for 
training for other students at different universities as well as marketing and advertising. Uh, would you need equipment? Uh, for the most part, equipment is fairly cheap and it'd be with the uh, training. So when I do train somebody, they end up keeping the tools that it takes. It takes around 15 to 20 dollars to equip somebody to fully fix an iPhone. Thank you. So regardless of how many people I feel shouldn't be able to breathe the same air as I do, um, we all have to share. So no matter the politics, global warming is a scientifically proven issue, and algae farming is a huge step towards that solution. Um, algae farming only needs three things, and those are the sun, carbon dioxide, and a source of water. Um, algae farming can be used to produce clean fuels like, bio, um, like uh, diesel and jet fuel, and the only byproduct when producing these is 10 pounds of food. Um, so the current leading cause of deforestation is agriculture right now. And that being said, this will be a huge step to actually cut down on the deforestation. Uh, algae produces 40 times more food uh, than competing agriculture. So um, seeing as the cost is about 10 times higher uh, than it needs to be right now, investing in um, funding from investors like you is crucial. Uh, we need to innovate and create creative solutions so that we can make this widespread and um, easily accessible. So, um, thank you. How much? Uh, a prototype? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Have you built a prototype, a small mini farm, or anything? Yeah. Like that? So there's actually a bunch, and there's competitors in the market as well that are doing the same kind of thing. Um, my focus right now is just on the next step of creating innovative solutions um, to the step-by-step -step processes, mostly for creating the biofuels. Um, that's going to be my biggest focus, and I figure that with the money I raise, I can either um, license that technology to these already existing companies or then begin my own venture. How much uh, startup capital are you asking for? So right now, the cost to start the whole farm is about $8,250,000. So uh, right now, I'd be looking for about uh, just $10,000 to just conduct research on ways to cut down the cost from $30 a gallon to like roughly two or three dollars a gallon. Hello, I'm Brittany Sittler. Um, did you know that 74% of people sleep on their side? And there is currently no mattress in the market specially designed for side sleepers. Um, the side sleeper is a new bed set including a mattress, pillow, and a set of sheets that work together to give side sleepers around the world a good night's sleep. Our biggest competitor is Tempur-Pedic mattresses, but they're astronomically expensive, and we do not believe in a one-size-fits-all approach to sleep. Our mattress and specially designed sheets have a custom measured indent perfectly designed to cradle your shoulder and arm, arm whereas the custom measured pillow supports your head and neck while you sleep comfortably on your side. I'm asking for an investment of $50,000 to start manufacturing the side sleeper on a larger scale. A great night's sleep is now a possibility for many people thanks to the all new side sleeper. What would your marketing strategy be with the uh, the side sleeper? Would it be in the kind of traditional mattress stores, or would it be more along the lines of the Casper, Instagram <laughs> mattress type? Um, I feel like the ultimate goal would be to get it into like mattress stores, but to start out with, you would probably have to start like that guy that did the weird pillow thing, the my pillow, which was an ultimate flop, by the way. My grandmother has one; they're awful. Um, <laughs> he needed to invest more in his research, but you would need to start somewhere, but the ultimate goal would be to get it into a mattress store to compete directly with the Tempur-Pedic mattresses. Um, have you thought about pricing, and, and who are you competing against? Um, so the pricing is difficult because the Tempur-Pedic is astronomically expensive because they claim that the memory foam technology costs so much money. Um, I think that their profit margin is huge, and memory foam would not be a good way to go for the side sleeper because you want that cradle to stay in one position to support your shoulder. 
So our price could definitely be way lower than a Tempur-Pedic mattress because we wouldn't be using as expensive supplies as them. And they would definitely be our biggest competitor, but along with any other mattress. But like I said, 74% of people around the world sleep on their side. So, I mean, this was a problem for me, which is why I came up with this. I wake up every morning with an arm that's numb because you like squish your arm underneath you as you sleep on your side. So if there was a custom measured indent in your mattress, that would no longer be a problem. So the other month, I took my friend on a snowboarding trip. Um, I had equipment, but she didn't, so she was forced to rent equipment for snowboards and boots. Um, waiting in line for equipment rentals and picking out sizes could take hours out of your day on the mountain. And it, it takes about like one to two hours to even get the um, rental equipment um, to go. So imagine if you can just show up to the mountain with all your equipment picked out and all ready to go. That's where the app Go Snow comes in. This, will, this app allows the, the user to pick out the, their equipment ahead of time based on their height, weight, and shoe size. Um, any mountain resort can purchase a membership with uh, Go Snow to offer their guests our great service. Um, the next step for Go Snow would be to hire an app developer to create this app. What would prevent a uh, ski mountain from just taking this in-house? Um, well, there is, that's a good question. There is actually people that, there is apps already created that do, um, that do rentals. Like you could, you could pretty much just rent it through the app and then go to the mountain. Uh, but for this, the, the mountain would use, they, you would use their inventory, their, the mountain's um, equipment. And I feel like a customer relationship with their business and their equipment is more trusted within the mountain and, and them compared to somebody on, on the outside just renting whatever equipment they get. So I figured that would uh, prevent them from going outside. Each, each player and play within their own world. Um, and that's what I'm creating. I'm creating their own little uh, world where they can play. Uh, Minecraft is really just a startup, um, especially for the 6 to 12 year olds, because it is currently a, a very strong fad. the setup is, is taken care of, then you go ahead and start moving on to more video games and branching out. Um, my long-term plan is either uh, acquire other companies or be acquired by a larger party event uh, company uh, within the area. So uh, pricing of, of your service versus other you know, bounty houses and everything else that's out there, how, how do you so price that? So for a party of six, um, so it would be your birthday uh, person, uh, guy or girl, um, and then their five friends. Uh, that's going to run you about $650, and that comes, like I said, with the, the setup, and you have, that's a four-hour rental with an event host that comes and helps set up everything. And if you have any technical issues or that you run into, that's a person that's right there that can go ahead and, and handle and address those quickly to allow you to have the most out of your four-hour rental. Um, compared to bouncy houses, uh, a bouncy house is going to run you about $300 to $400. Um, the problem with that is that after they bounce for an hour or two, they're tired. And your kids, now you have a big, beautiful, inflatable lawn, lawn ornament, Versus here, the average uh, time spent on Minecraft gaming along uh, students playing on their own is about three hours. Within a group, you can easily double that, if not triple it. So within a four-hour rental, you'll be able to keep them really occupied and, and your, your kids occupied within that time period. Um, so that's why I think that uh, versus a bouncy house, or there are other, uh, other options, like I said, laser tag or bowling. Um, but this is more at your home um, and, and really allows you to go ahead and create an event around this Minecraft or the video game of your choice once we get to that aspect. Thank you. Uh, 
But the reality of at-home parenting is now the exception, not the rule. Due in part to that, at least, child care costs continue to rise. Child care is now an estimated 28% of the family's budget, coming in at an average of almost $1,200 a month. My name is Ken Patelli, and my wife has been a child care professional now for several years. Our idea is to start our own daycare consultant franchise, where we would set up a daycare that would act as a benchmark, and then we would offer consulting services to assist others in starting their own centers, both large and small. We would specialize in local regulations and will help new entrepreneurs every step along the way. Uh, we would assist them in increasing profit margins, uh, reducing tuition costs, and overall improving uh, efficiencies. We're looking for a small initial investment to help us get started. Thank you. So there are a lot of daycare centers out there already, people yes. who have decades of experience. Why is your experience in the short time you have a startup going to um, outstrip what uh, those other people already know? So one of our main competitors would be someplace like Educational Play Care, which now has 18 locations in Connecticut. Uh, but one of the things my wife has noticed is that they are becoming a bloated organization with too much overhead and a lot of inefficiencies. They do have a lot of pros, such as uh, including meals and higher wages for their employees. But one of the things we would like to do is extract the CRM portion of it and do all of the customer relations management so that we could be more efficient and assist in opening smaller businesses for people. Because one of the things we've noticed is a lot of women in my family and friends of ours, when they're looking at, say, starting a family, they have they run into the crossroads. Do I take a couple years off, raise the kid on my own, or do I put them in a daycare and then uh, uh, not have the direct parenting? But one of the things that we would be able to do here would be allow women to make a third choice, or the husbands to make a third choice, which would be replacement income. So you would have the baby, and then you would start your own very small uh, daycare center of maybe you know three or four children, um, and then you would be able to replace your income instead of losing an income for however long, and you would still have the direct contact with your children. Okay. Thank you. grocery store a couple weeks ago recycling some cans. The lady in front of me took over 20 minutes to recycle all her items. I politely waited till she was done, and by the time it was my turn, the machine said, see assistance for help. So I went over to get some help, and by the time I got back to the machine, three more people were waiting in line. I thought to myself, there's got to be a better way. So I came up with a solution, the recyclable salve. You can now recycle cans, bottles, even newspapers from your own home. It accepts all brands and even damaged containers as well. The machine scans how many items you recycled and instantly deposits the money into your account, saving you a trip to the grocery store. It saves you time, money, and is great for the environment. Everyone who owns the machine qualifies for a free service pickup. Sal's Recyclable Center will pick up all the products from your home once a month for no charge. With a small investment, you can make a few dollars from your own home, and you can also save the environment. Get yours today before we sell out. How do you monetize what you're talking about? Revenue. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's kind of like the, the, um, the machines in the grocery store where you, you put the can in and it, it, you get five cents for each can. Well, the machine scans how many um, items are going in. So you get five cents for uh, each can, bottle, even like uh, newspaper. So, and then um, it deposits the money into your account set up by the machine. I think the question was more on, okay, that's, that's the revenue model for that person. They'll get the five cents back. How does your company, where, where, where do, you, do you take a margin off of that five cents so that, or, or is there a monthly uh, user fee? Well, uh, you, you, buy, you buy the machine and then just right. use it in your house. So yes, yeah, so we sell the machines individually. And okay. yeah, you order, yeah, you order the product. 
project and then you can uh, use it at your house instead of going to the store. seven seconds to make a first impression and in those seven seconds you guys judged John and myself and unconsciously decided that you probably like John a little more. Why is that? We both have the same intentions but John has something more to offer to you guys, something more visually pleasing. We both, we are visual creatures and a lot of brands like a media presence signal is the most convenient and cost effective way to get to potential customers. This way the their reaching potential, these brands will have more hard time separating themselves from the competition. I'm John and this is Amber, and we're part of Steve Sandridge, a media production company that we offer all types of visuals, including photo shoots, music videos, and commercials. And we also guide brands uh, as a company to grow in the media industry. Um, we provide opportunities to access creative and effective visuals, as well as being partners with music producers, modeling agencies, and performers and to give our clients the edge that we need to stand out against their com competition. Any questions? How do you differentiate yourself from other media production companies? So we are not only a video production company, but our biggest aspect is our networking with different people. Like we have performers, we have people that juggle fire sticks, we have people, models, that go in our videos. Mm -hmm. Like, our main thing is just networking. And using all these people, it kind of differentiates from ourselves because we're not only doing video, but we're offering so much more to people. Yeah. And then in that video field, we also, to differentiate us from other video creators, is that we also, um, when we charge our fees, it's re rel relatively on the cheaper side, as well as giving you the same quality as if you were to get $12,000 video. So what's going to happen now is the judges are going to go next door and uh, tally up their sheets and, and decide who's going to get money. And in the meantime, I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> so do you guys want to uh, head to that door? And Mike Nicastro, our entrepreneur in residence, will uh, give you a place where you can confer with each other. This is, um, to all of you who got up here and stood up here, congratulations. You know, this was really, um, you know, getting up and speaking in front of folks and, and the added intimidation tonight of the lights and the camera. Uh, you have, you've done something special. Not many people will do this. And so I, I hope that you're proud of yourself and that you take this experience and build on it. I know um, there's some folks here who are freshmen and this may be the first time we've had freshmen, so it's good for you guys. Um, and others of you who are seniors and moving on, but taking the opportunity to come and speak and practice doing this in front of people will serve you throughout your life. You know, I, I may look like I'm all confident in everything here, and I kind of am, but when I was your age, I don't think you could have drugged me up here with wild horses. So I, you know, I, I want to just tell you, it's, it's a wonderful thing that you've taken this opportunity to do this. I think there's some really cool ideas here. Um, 
you know, I'm not going to be a judge. I, I like to hand that off because I would have a hard time deciding who I'd want to give the prizes to. And so that's why I, I, I get these other guys, you know, are above my pay grade to do that. Um, I do want to um, say a couple of things about our, our program here. Um, you know, we have a major in entrepreneurship and it, well, it's a concentration in the management major. Um, and starting next fall, we'll have a minor for non-business majors. So if any of you have friends who are thinking, wow, I wish I could take some entrepreneurship courses, but I'm over in liberal arts and engineering, uh, we now have a, a, a defined program where you can get a minor in, in entrepreneurship. So if you've got friends in the other schools, let them know. We'd be happy to have them come and do this with us. Um, we have an entrepreneurship club. Uh, one of our presenters, he had to leave at Salzen, um, who had the idea for the Bulletproof Desk, is the president of the Entrepreneurship Club, and a couple of people here are presented, uh, Amber and some others are, are, are members of the club, but we appreciate you know if you wanted to join with us. Um, we're doing some fun things. Last fall, we had a, a branding competition. The logo that you see up there was uh, created by some students, and they won a prize doing that. We'll have another branding competition uh, next fall. We'll create a new logo for the club, and. Uh, have some fun um, working in cooperation with graphic design and marketing and other parts of the university. Uh, we are a collaborative group and we, we appreciate when other people play with us. Um, later in this um, term, um, in just a couple of weeks, we're going to have a business plan competition. I'm going to go change the slide so you can see what we're doing here. There are actually two competitions. We're uh, listing three here. The one we're doing right now, and then um, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have uh, Stanley Black and Decker sponsors the bus business plan competition. Uh, we are going to give away ten thousand dollars that night. A little bit higher stakes, and then a week later, uh, there's a statewide uh, business plan competition where there'll be fifty thousand uh, dollars combined cash and professional services. Half of it will be cash prizes. Half will be uh, services like accounting and legal services that uh, various firms have donated. The, um, the Stanley Black and Decker plan is, is, they've been sponsoring us for over five years now. We're very grateful for their, their support. Um, and it's open to anyone that has a CCSU student as a leader on the team. Uh, there is a two-step process, both for our competition and for the statewide business plan competition. There's an online submission with the preliminary judging, and then we're going to have a venture fair. Um, if we have too many, we may have to filter some of the online down to a, a manageable number, and then we're going to have a, a, a presentation like tonight. It's three minutes. Each of us won, and you get to have visuals, and then a three-minute question and answer period, and then more extended question and answer period. Um, the, um, the key things to remember is that we, we encourage interdisciplinary teams. Uh, it's open again to any student-led, uh, CCSU student-led team. That means that you could have people who aren't students here on your team as long as you have CCSU leadership. Uh, teams can then win more than one prize, and it could be any kind of business. We're not limited. Uh, it's like the tickets tonight, some small business, some big business. Uh, this is the, the um, plan that for the prizes, uh, this could change a little bit depending on the competition and who enters, but um, the best presentation, we're, we're kind of thinking because we're planning to live stream that event also, that we'll do this as a, um, like a Olympics, you know, the, you like to get scored real time, you know, seven, six, the Russian judges give you a 10 if you're a Russian. And, so, um, and you, you can win more than one of these. There will be a crowd favorite. There will, there will, uh, so we encourage you to have people come and, and uh, be at the things. And usually those who bring their, their family and all their friends win that prize. But uh, you know, so we like to have a large group. Uh, the competition will be in the semesters over in the Student Center. We're, we'll have a similar kind of video setup there. But we'll also have food uh, and beverages. So you know, you, at work, you get a good meal out of this and some fun. Um, there's a, a website I've got the, the address up here, but the best thing is to come see me or email me. You should know how to reach me. It's harrisdrl at ccsu.edu. Um, I'm also up, up 
upstairs on the second floor in the dean's office. So you can sign and just, but you're going to need to make an online submission. Uh, it turns out that's the same. Literally, I set it up so that you can, with a button or two push, enter the statewide business plan competition. You use the same platform, and you have the same set of questions. Uh, you can go start a submission and, and save it and come back to it and save it. So if you're interested in doing this, I encourage you to sooner rather than later go ahead and start so you see what the questions are and how much space you have with your word limits or character limits on fields that you'll be entering in. One of the other things about our business plan competition, because of the state grant we have, um, the winners of the scalable business and the personal business will get an automatic buy into the state competition. That it means it will all automatically be a finalist. So if you win either the uh, small business or the scalable business part of our competition, you'll automatically be entered, entered into the statewide final. So, you know, it, it really is worth coming and playing. Um, you can submit to both places at once, and even if you're not one of our finalists, you might get to be one of their finalists. Um, different judges do different things. In the end. So, you know, we have here a sense of a legacy of winning at the state level, and this is sticks so long ago when I was younger and heavier. Uh, <laughs> I don't usually get to say that, but it works out. These are three different winners over the last Ten years, we've had I think 12 or 14 winners. The competition runs every semester, and we we won everything from the scalable prizes to the best written plans to best uh, presentation. Um, this is to tell you that your ideas are just as good as the ideas coming out of Yale and UConn and other places like that. We're very proud of your, our legacy of winning, and um, I'd like for you guys to be the, the next the next winner. So I think now's the time where I have to start dancing. <laughs> um, do you guys have any questions about any of this? Where can we find this in case we, you know, weren't paying full attention to this? Is this going to be up on Blackboard or are all on our Well, I, I have sent notes to your professors who probably passed them on to you, but they haven't had your attention until now. So I will resend all of that information to the, your various professors uh, I think pretty much everybody here, the professors or through the club, uh, the entrepreneurship club, we will get that, that detail out to you. Um, a whole lot of the ideas here, I think, are, are, are competition worthy. I, I don't know that all of them are, but that might just be a limitation on how much I understood of what you just, you know, one minute is a tight time frame, I get that. Um, I would also suggest to you that you can come by my office Again, I'm up in room 210, just to the left as you get off the elevators on the second floor. Uh, and Mike Nicastro, who's uh, one of our entrepreneur in residence, uh, every Wednesday afternoon right across the hall here has office hours. And Dr. Berry is up in uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday up on the fourth floor at the end of the hall. Uh, we're all happy to work with you with your ideas, uh, work with you to expand perhaps projects that you're doing in class. Um, and certainly the professors in your class can work with you, but um, to help you be sure that you're ready to enter the competition as best you can. Um, other questions? Yes. So, how many of you are coming back next year? How many are not graduating? Can, can, so about, oh, great, fabulous. This is like three quarters or more of the room. So let me, while I'm telling you about things, and we still have a minute or two before the judges come back, um, we run activities year-round. We'll have another elevator pitch competition in the fall. And by the way, you can come and pitch again. Even if you win, you can come pitch again. There's no harm in doing that, even if it's the same idea. We just hope that you're better at it next time. Uh, in the fall, we're going to have um, also a, um, a weekend event. It's not a for-credit thing, but it, it's called the Launch Weekend, where we'll work with students from other universities on a, an immersion weekend. Uh, where we have corporate sponsors who will come and present an idea. It's kind of like a business hackathon, if you will. So it's not coding, but it's solving a business problem in an intensive weekend session. Um, so you want to look out for that. We'll be calling it Launch Weekend. Uh, that's something that's run through the Connecticut Consortia of Entrepreneurship Educators. 
Um, it's a collaboration of those who teach entrepreneurship statewide. Um, I happen to be the president of that organization right now, and we're doing some really exciting things. We've got, finally got some grant money to run things like these launch weekends. Um, in the, and if you happen to be here next spring, we would have a, a unique course that um, we call New Venture Challenge, a lean launch methodology, where we collaborate with other universities and put, um, put all of our students from multiple universities together in, in a series of weekend events where you walk through a, a process of discovery and design uh, and building a company and working with students from other universities. Um, in the past, we've had uh, University of Bridgeport, uh, Western Connecticut, Quinnipiac, uh, and a couple of the community colleges. We hope next fall, next spring, the uh, University of Hartford will join us and possibly some other place. Uh, we think maybe uh, Connecticut, Connecticut College, possibly Wesleyan will join us in that. So that's another thing to stay tuned and look out for announcements around that. It's an exciting program and it's something that um, you don't have to have prerequisites to take, um, and students really find it a remarkable experience. So while we're still waiting for the judges, <laughs> let me also, uh, I want to acknowledge somebody in the room over here. We have Paul Gennaris. Paul has been a, a great contributor to the university, including funding an entrepreneurship scholarship. Um, so every year for the last, I don't know how many years, Paul, eight? Something like eight years, we've been able to offer offer scholarships to um, to students interested in entrepreneurship, and uh, they don't necessarily have to be an entrepreneurship concentrator. In fact, we've written it in that it can be an engineering student, it can be anybody in the school of business, it can be essentially anyone who's interested in um, entrepreneurship. So I know that the deadline for Filing for scholarships this year has passed, but there was a glitch in the system, um, and we actually didn't get explicit applications for your scholarship, and we're, we're still trying to decide. So if you think you're deserving of a scholarship, you could also contact me about that. Um, so we haven't made the final decision on fall scholarship this year. You know it pretty well. Yeah, you'll see. <laughs> but it's not too late if you think that you want to uh, nominate yourself for that. About another minute. Well, I can tell what the trend on the money too. I mean, you have scholarships. Yeah. And, uh, before they could change some of this, but now they bring up 100% of the income given out in scholarships. Yeah. And it's good. It's good. We know that uh, college is expensive. And um, so I'm, I'm eager for us to be able to give that money out and very, very grateful for your support with that. I mean, it means a lot to our students, I tell you. Well, they haven't. They just said it's more than last year. <laughs> I don't get to give away 300000 No, no, no. Wow. So we can give a pretty good-sized scholarship out. Fifteen hundred dollars each. Yeah. So it'd be more than that. But yeah. um, you got reasonably good grades, and you can show that you've been engaged. Here, you you know those of you who have presented clearly, you've got something going on. Um, please come by and, and let me know, and I'll be sure that you get proper consideration for that. I know a couple of people have uh, been in touch with me about that, but we haven't decided yet, and I'm open to any of you letting me know. I guess you guys must have had really good ideas that you're having such a hard time deciding. Sure. It's the one you're most excited about. So, um, you know, 
if I were looking at the idea, so there, there are different things. For example, uh, Ben's proposition about uh, doing yard service. Wide, world, worldwide, then that's a scalable business. So I think it's really about how you position what you want to do. Um, and it, I don't think there's any better or worse. It's really just doing really well what you decide to do. Kind of like life, you know, doing what you decide. So our judges have returned. I'm going to step back and uh, let's focus on them. You guys, should, when you announce what you're going to announce, please announce into the microphone. Okay. okay. Butcher any of your names. I apologize, guys. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for every to everybody who came out. We really there's so many great ideas here tonight about how many people pitched? Twenty four my like at least twenty more good ideas than I have. So that's <laughs> that's phenomenal. But uh, we we decided uh, honorable I don't like the term honorable mention. But you know, three others that we thought were very, very strong. Um, so I will, I guess, start with um, our first. Is it honorable mention? Have I ever heard better terms for those? First, uh, first runner-up. I like runner-up. Judge's choice. Yeah, is uh, Ben Gross for his landscaping company. <laughs> um, our second. Our uh, next runner-up is, I'm not going to get this last name right, but Alex Yal Yalde yeah. for the iPhone repair. And we all are going to enlist your help shortly, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yay. We clap him. Third runner-up is uh, Jordan Jumkowski. Uh, we really, really enjoyed your presentation on Minecraft. And I don't even know what Minecraft is, so that's pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> And our uh, overall winner is uh, Ken Patelli. We really thought your daycare idea was great and scalable, and that's even though you, uh, you had some not so great things to say about my kids' daycare. We still like it. Can we please come down? Maybe we can acknowledge you down here. Would the judges like to say anything else before we uh, wrap this up? Keep at it, you know. Um, so, there was a few ideas that did not uh, win tonight. Uh, that does not mean they are not good ideas. Uh, it was uh, fairly competitive. Uh, there is a, uh, uh, a few that I can point to right off the, right off the bat. One of them is the uh, uh, pressure for the recyclable equipment. I think there is uh, probably a revenue stream in there and it would need a lot of capital, but um, I think there may be a way, or, uh, way to make that work between the existing infrastructure and uh, there you are. and a few other ideas out there that I think with a little bit more uh, digging in, it might have a, uh, a, a good idea. It's not Lauren stage. It's a, a, um, I think you have something there. In fact, I'm willing, uh, I'll be happy to introduce you to another they do vertical farming, hydroponics. Uh, they, they're ba based out of here, in, not too far from in Meriden. And I'll give you my card and uh, you can drop an email. I'll get you in touch with them. Maybe you want to cultivate that idea more. Thank you. I'm on the uh, faculty, or the adjunct faculty uh, here at uh, CCSU. So I see a lot of, of uh, familiar faces uh, presenting tonight. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, entrepreneurs go through, uh, uh, and I'm speaking uh, specifically to those who didn't, uh, uh, who didn't win anything tonight. Uh, one of the things that entrepreneurs go through is, uh, you know, you get to hear a lot of no's before you get to yes. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of good ideas tonight. Uh, I know a lot of preparation went into a one-minute uh, 
elevator pitch, and at one of my classes this week, we talked. As a matter of fact, we talked about that. Uh, but keep the ideas coming. And uh, one of the things about being an entrepreneur uh, is uh, you got to be tenacious. Uh, and so keep, uh, you know, keep keep up that uh, keep up that spirit. So Julie, would you like to say a word or two about Chip and Goodwin? We just going to give you a minute because we are so grateful for the sponsorship. Okay. So Chipman and Goodwin, we are well very happy to sponsor this event again. We are a full service law firm, but we definitely do a lot of work with um, emerging businesses as well as uh, venture capital funds. But we you know, we do everything from a this is my elevator pitch, and I, I don't want to fall. Uh, <laughs> we do <laughs> we do everything from um, you know start you know organizing startups, helping them pick their entity form. Uh, helping them with initial financing, protecting their IP, kind of all the uh, things you can imagine that early stage companies need, right? Protecting their ideas, making sure they have a form that will, you know, an entity structure that will protect them legally, making sure when they you know, do a finance and have money come in that they have terms that are the most favorable to them as a company that they can have. Uh, we help them negotiate with different vendors. Uh, so it, it's fun, you know. We, we see all sides of it. We work with the funds, we work with the you know startup companies, and it's it's great to be here today to see hopefully our next you know our clients of the future. You guys are doing really exciting stuff, and we are really excited to be excited to be here. So thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you all for coming tonight.